There's other changes in the brain that we know a lot less about. And one of those is white matter degeneration. So the interior of the brain where the fiber tracks are crisscrossing, uh, connecting all the nerve cells, we see a deterioration in the white matter. And we think that's one of the earliest features. We see it in young people, teenagers, 20 year olds who've had repetitive hits to the head. We think it's important, uh, but we can't determine how important it is until we get more controls. Uh, it's very hard to study the brain of normal people um, because people don't think of donating it if they've never had any problems. If, if their loved one never had any problems, they don't think that it might their, the brain donation might be of benefit to science. And this is precisely why we have very few control brains and we have extremely few young person brains between the ages of 16 and 50. So young age uh, to middle age, uh, we have a, a dearth, a, a real lack of people who were leading normal lives and then died accidentally or otherwise and donated their brains to science. So tonight is a real plea, uh, not just for those brains of athletes that you've been so kind uh, to help coordinate those donations, but we're also looking for brains now from people 16 to 50 who were not athletes, who never had brain trauma, who died accidentally of something or other, and uh, whose family might be interested in donating their brains uh, to science. We can use these brains to control, I mean, to compare the affected brains to the non-affected brains. And this is the next frontier for us really understanding the very earliest changes that occur in these brains and occurs in really young people.